Hi, this is Sarit Schwetzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneir Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your Creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your Source. Hi, and welcome to the It Is Top podcast. This is episode 30 for the 18th of Tevez in a leap year. And today's podcast, we're going to be tackling chapter 11, the entirety of chapter 11. So bear with me. It's not going to be the, the shortest episode, but I will try to make it as succinct as possible. And the topic of today is all going to be all about the Rasha, all about the evil person. So if you remember, there were three main categories of people. There was the righteous person, the, t- the t- Tariq, then there's the Benoni, the intermediate person, and then there's the Rasha, the wicked person. And we mentioned that there are two different types of Tadikim and two different types of Rashaim. So in previous episodes, in the last chapter, we talked about the Tzadik. We talked about the different levels of a Tzadik. Now we're going to be talking about the different levels of a Rasha. And I think as a preliminary note to mention here, and this is something that's going to be brought up in today's chapter, is the title of today's episode, which I called Regret is a Good Thing. So I think that it's important to mention that in today's society, as you most likely are aware, we regret is really not something that's celebrated. So we live in a society where it's really, you know, there's this idea that shame is bad and you should never regret anything you do and you should listen to yourself, listen to your instincts, follow your heart, all that stuff. And as we've been learning and as we're going to continue to learn, this is in stark contrast to Torah Judaism and specifically in terms of the Tanya. So the Tanya and Torah Judaism in general really shows us that moral relativism is not a thing. There is a real thing of moral objectivity. There are things that are outright objectively bad and things that are objectively good. And so when we're talking about somebody who's a Russia, we're going to be talking about this idea of evil and good and, you know, things like that, that are really, really to be thought of as objective things. And hopefully we'll understand this a little bit more as we go through it. So the chapter talks off and it it begins with discussing, with bringing up this idea of a Russia Vitovlo. So this is one category of the Russia. So if you remember, there were two categories. There was the Russia Viralo, the wicked person that it is bad for them which is considered a complete Russia. And then there's the Russia Vitovlo. This is an, a, a wicked person that it is good for him. And this is what's considered to be an incomplete Russia. And what the Ultra Rebbe says here is that this incomplete Russia is the exact parallel to the incomplete Sadiq. So if you remember, how did we define the incomplete Sadiq? And that we called the incomplete Sadiq, a Sadiq Viralo, a Sadiq that it is bad for him, is this is somebody who is a Sadiq. So they have successfully conquered the negativity within them. However, not to the point that they've eradicated it completely. They've just subdued it and, and have had their negative forces within them be nullified and be uh, subdued and latent. And so here, by contrast, what we're saying is that a Russia Vitovlo, an incomplete Russia, a Russia that it is good for him, is somebody who it's not that they don't have any good within them at all. It just means that they've subdued this goodness within them. They've they've pushed it down and nullified it so that the good is nullified to the bad. And to be really specific, and the altar of it does get into this specificity here, is if you remember the good comes from the brain. And the right ventricle of the heart, that's, those are the, dwell, the places in which the goodness dwells. And the negative forces dwell in the left ventricle of the heart. And so 
what's happening in the case of a wicked person who it is good for them, an incomplete wicked person, is these this force of goodness within the mind and the right ventricle of the heart becomes subdued and nullified to the forces of the klipa that are in the left ventricle of the heart. And now the altar Rebbe says that just as we said that when it came to an incomplete sadiq, there were numerous and myriads of levels of these kind of people, so too is it when it comes to the incomplete Russia, that there are many, many, many different levels and types of this incomplete Russia, whether it's in terms of the quantity of goodness that is nullified to the bad or the quality by, with, by which it is nullified to the bad, so, God forbid. So... For example, there's somebody who might have their goodness be nullified to the bad within them, but only slightly, only a little bit and not always. It's just once in a while, you know, they allow their negativity, their evil force within them to overcome them. And so generally speaking, they're actually, you know, they're they're a pretty good person. But once in a while, they they allow for this the evil within to overcome the good and to, as we spoke of using the language that we spoke of previously, where this the evil within them conquers the small city, which is the body. But it doesn't conquer the entire body even. It just conquers some of it. So what does it mean that it conquers some of it? It says it, it means that if you remember we have three garments of the soul. So it means that it it it, it ha it what happens is that the the evil conquers the body, but just one of the garments of the soul, for example. So whether it's in terms of action, to do very light sins, you know, not nothing too severe, but just like something, you know, a light kind of transgression, or it could be just exclusively in terms of speaking. So let's say if somebody speaks what we call avak lashonara, um, so that's not even lashonara, like not outright slander or gossip, but um, you know, something just sort of like a hint of it. Like they maybe like hint at the fact that something that's kind of like not the best thing about another person, but don't write out outright explicitly say it. Or, you know, maybe they're, you know, just talking about like frivolous kind of things. Or uh, this, it might be, we might be affecting the garments of thought. So what would, uh, what would it look like if somebody's evil powers were to overcome their garment of thought this would be if a person was just merely thinking about something that is sinful and it's they may not even be thinking about that they're actually going to indulge in this sin it's just that they are just thinking about this thing that isn't ideal so he gives the example of somebody who thinks about the sexual union of a man and a woman and and this, he says, is actually going against the transgression of the Torah because you're supposed to guard yourself to not think about these kind of things and to purify your thoughts. Or another example he gives that, that has to do with thought is, let's say if it's time when a person is supposed to be thinking about Torah and instead they start, start just, you know, kind of like daydreaming and not really thinking about what they should be thinking. So the Altar Rebbe says that every single one of these examples of whether a person is uh, having the evil within them overpower one of their garments, whether it's action, speech, or thought, is at that moment when they're engaging in this activity, they are called a rasha. They are called an, a wicked person. Why? Because at that moment, the wickedness within them overcame their body and caused them to indulge in these kind of things. And then the altar describes what usually happens afterwards is that the good then does overcome the bad within their body. And, how, and this manifests itself in such a way that the person regrets what they did and they, they ask for forgiveness from God and they engage in what's known as tshuva, as return to God in the way that are specifically outlined uh, by, by our sages. So our sages gave very, very clear directives as to how to go about doing this. And the Altar Rebbe cites that there are three main ways of atonement that Rabbi Yishmael would, would teach to his students. He doesn't outline what they are here, but we do get into them a little bit later once we get into a later part of the book called Igarat HaTshuva. And so... Yeah, so this is this is describing a certain type of Russia. So it's, it's it's describing somebody who is indeed a Russia, but it's they're not a severe Russia to the extent that the evil within them has conquered their body and their mind so entirely. In fact, 
it's only conquered them a little bit and it's only conquered maybe even one garment of their soul and only in a very small level. Now the altar of it describes somebody who is a Rasha and where the bad within them actually does overcome them in a much greater way. And it doesn't just overcome one of their garments, but it actually overcomes and overtakes all three of the garments. And this is somebody who engages not just in little small sins like we've been describing before, but actually in more severe kind of sins. And it happens more frequently. It doesn't just happen once in a while. But in the meantime, in between their sinning, they actually do feel a sense of regret and they do think about doing tshuva. They think about repentance. And this is because they actually do have goodness within their soul. So the fact that they do feel this sense of regret is actually a good thing. And it's a sign that they actually do have goodness still within them. But because this good within them is still sort of like weak, it's not it's not winning the war, it only comes up once in a while, but it isn't able to actually overcome the negativity within them completely to totally stop sinning at all. And the Ultra Abba cites the Gemara here in the Dharam 9b, where it says, Rasha'im mal'im charatot, that evil people, wicked people are full of regrets. And so this the altar is saying this is alluding to these types of wicked people that yes they are wicked but they are not completely wicked because the fact that they have regrets shows that they actually do have goodness latent within them and this is actually the vast majority of Roshayim is what the altar Rebbe says most people that we talk about as being wicked fall into this category that they do have some good within them there aren't very many people that are completely through and through totally wicked and then the altar Rebbe says there's another category of people what if you have somebody who never feels regret and never feels like doing tshuva. So this is that other category. This is the category of a complete Russia, which we call a Russia viralo, a Russia that it is bad for him. That the only thing within them is badness because they this the evil within them has overcome the good to such an extent that it's not even in them anymore. They don't have any more good within them at all. But the Altar Rebbe concludes that even these Rashaim, even these complete, completely wicked people, what happens to the goodness? Yes, it's not inside of their bodies anymore. They've successfully eradicated the goodness within them. However, it doesn't go away completely. This, Their goodness actually hovers and surrounds them from above. And the Ultra Rebbe says that this explains why in the Gemara Sanhedrin 39a, it actually describes how any time you have 10 a gathering of 10 Jews no matter who they are the shechina rests above them and this he says this is why the wording is very specific that the shechina rests above them because even when you have the most wicked person ever who does not have any goodness within them at all they still do have goodness it's just hovering above them and it and this gets manifest when the 10 Jews come together in the same way so that's the chapter and that's chapter 11 and so just to conclude on sort of like a more practical note is the idea of a rasha the idea of somebody who is wicked this is some something we'll see is actually probably most people in the entire world but the good news is that most people that fall into this category are in the category of what's called a Russia Vitovlo, a Russia that it is good for them, meaning they are an incomplete Russia, meaning that yes, the evil does at time overtake them and overcome them. However, it's not permanent and it's not something that happens all the time and it's not complete. And the proof that it's not complete is because they tend to feel regret, whether they feel regret very, very frequently, or whether it's once in a while, the fact that a person feels regret is proof that they still have good within them. So that, you know, hopefully that's a little bit of an inspirational note. If you ever feel a sense of regret over anything that you've done, this is actually a good sign. This means that you have a conscience. This means that you still have goodness within you. And it's also, you know, that final note that the altar Rebbe gave is sort of like a redeeming factor for everybody. It's that even somebody who does not, you know, God forbid, like a psychopath, somebody who doesn't feel regret, even for them, yes, maybe for these kind of people who are very rare, who do not have any goodness within them at all, they don't have a conscience, they still have goodness. It's just hovering above them. So that's today's Tanya. And uh, I hope that was clear. And tomorrow we'll go on and we'll... Be going into chapter 12.
I'll speak with you then. Thanks for listening to the It Is Top podcast, hosted by Sarit Switzer. This podcast is dedicated in loving memory of my maternal grandfather, Avraham Yitzhak ben Binyamin Cohen of Blessed Memory. Music by Shoshana. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show, please share it with others and subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Top project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow, and until then, have a great day.